In this video, we'll see how to transform objects and paths in Boxy SVG. I'm going to hover over to the right hand side here under the geometry panel and left click to bring up this geometry panel. It's useful to have this when you're transforming objects. If we left click on an object, we see it comes up with more options over here. The options change depending on what we have selected. And we can change and move this around. Notice as we're moving this, the X and Y change over here. That's the X and Y location of this object. And we can come over here to change this as well by just clicking in here and typing in like 200 and hitting the return key and it changes the location on the X axis. Um, so we can move around like that. We can also use these blue handles to change the size of the object. This changes the X and Y together. Um, this changes just like the height and the width. And we can come over and change the width and the height as you could imagine over here from this panel as well by just changing the number and hitting the return key on the keyboard and we can change the way that that looks. So there's multiple ways to affect uh, the size to, to transform an object in Boxy SVG. While we have it selected, if we left click again, the handles change color. Now we can rotate around by left clicking and holding these red handles or we can skew the object by left clicking and holding on these orange triangles. So that skew changes there and um, we can also rotate around by using this rotation handle in the geometry panel. We, if we want a specific rotation, we can just type in that rotation here and rotate it very quickly by using uh, typing in a specific rotation angle. And we can change the point that it rotates around by moving this little plus sign, this little black X. We can move it so it rotates around. If we want it to pivot around a certain point in our drawing, so we can use that to rotate around that specific point. We left click and hold that to move it. So if we want to rotate around the center, or if we want to rotate around a certain point. If we hold down the shift key on the keyboard while doing rotation, it'll rotate in 15 degree increments. So if we want to be more precise and we want to always have it be you know, set at like 90 and 45 and 30 degrees, I'm holding down the shift key on the keyboard to accomplish that. Without the shift key held down, it's a much more fine rotation movement. If we want to reset this center point, all we have to do is double click on it and it goes back to the very center. So you don't have to try to manually put it right in the center, you can just double click and it'll go back to the center. To get out of this transform mode, we can just left click into blank space and have everything deselected. Then we can left click on another object or whatever we want to do. When we're changing the X and Y together, we might accidentally skew our object and make it look uh, unrealistic or make it look a, a way that we don't want it to appear. So to keep that aspect ratio, we can hold down the shift key on the keyboard. And while we're holding down shift, it'll scale uniformly width and height at the same time. So that's the shift key on the keyboard to do that. Otherwise it could become skewed or look other than we want it to. You can always go to edit, undo, or do the control Z shortcut on the keyboard to undo changes and get back to a point that, where you had it at originally. Another way to maintain that aspect ratio is to go over to the transform tool and when it's selected, left click on it a second time. We have these different options for preserve and some of them are checked by default, some of them are not, but one of the options is aspect ratio. When this is checked, we don't have to worry about holding down the shift key. Everything will always transform and preserve its aspect ratio, but that's only when this is checked. If we uncheck it, we'll be able to squish and change things without keep, keeping that aspect ratio constant. Some of the other options we have here are to keep the preserve the stroke. So by default, the stroke will be preserved, which means if we shrink this down, the stroke size always stays the same. I'm hitting the plus key on the keyboard to zoom in really close here. And now we see the stroke stays the same even though we shrunk it down. And if we were to uncheck this, what it's going to do is keep the stroke relative to uh, the drawing or relative to that object. So now we see as we increase the size, the size of the stroke is also increasing. Whereas if we have this checked, when we increase the object, the stroke will stay the same. So play with that to get some experience uh, on how that works. We can also preserve the, the radius of a rectangle or the radii. And so with this, when we resize this, if it's checked, it'll automatically redraw that uh, radius of the rectangle. See how that works? If we uncheck this, then we could shrink this down and it'll stay in that same radius. Each corner will have the same radius uh, that, it, that it appears to have. So if you're wondering why it's redrawing the radius for you, um, that's because you'll have this checked. So preserve radii is how you can change that. 
and the rotation to illustrate this we can open up the elements panel so with the rotation uh, when we have something selected and we rotate it notice as we're rotating the path data is changing down here in the elements panel when this is turned on rotating will change the path data but when we turn it off it will use the transform attribute instead this doesn't make a big difference in the appearance of the object while you're rotating it but it does make a difference in how the computer draws that or how it writes the code to draw that object if these options are getting in our way we can just click on them to make them go away another panel that's useful when transforming objects is this arrangement panel and we have different options for a line. I'm going to zoom out here so we can see the extents of our drawing. If we select an, an object, we can align it to the top of our drawing if it's relative to our default view. We can align it to the bottom by clicking this button or the left or the right. We can set it to the center of our canvas. And we can even click these buttons here to expand it to fill the entire limits of our canvas. Or if we wanted, we could just have it fill the width of our canvas like this chair here we could fill just the width of the canvas but not affect the height and then we could push it towards the top and I'm going to do control Z to undo a couple of those because we can also set this our entire selection if we hold down the shift key it'll change the where it aligns so we can align it to the outside of our canvas as well so we can put it at the center of our canvas and holding down the shift key will toggle where these go whether it's inside or the outside so just be aware holding the shift key can change that and we can also change uh, right now we're doing this relative to our view but we can change it relative to whatever was selected first so if we select this object and then hold down the shift key and select a second object we can center those on each other now this red object is a little difficult to see we can select just the red object and we can come down here and we can raise it to be in front using this z order and we can also adjust some of these other things. We have flip so we can mirror on the x-axis or flip or mirror on the y-axis. And we can rotate around um, using transform as well instead of using our rotation handles. If we know we want to rotate 90 degrees, we can do that using this transform panel. There's more options here. We can group and ungroup just like we did with object and group. If we have multiple selected, we can just click this group button to quickly create a group. Or we can ungroup. And we'll play with this distribute more as well in the future. There's lots of, of good options in here, and there's a lot more than meets the eye with this arrangement panel. But just start to get familiar with it, especially when you're transforming. It can become very helpful. I hope this video has shown you some different methods that you can use the transform tools in Boxy SVG.